Welcome to Laravel API development with Vue.js single page application from scratch. The following episode is going to be an excerpt from the full course now available on Udemy. If you're interested in developing robust Laravel APIs with a front end built on Vue and Tailwind CSS, then this is the course for you. We go into great detail talking about things like authentication, testing, Tailwind CSS, Vue.js, Laravel, PHP unit, and so much more. So I hope you'll join me for the full course. Go ahead and click on the link in the description to get sent to the Udemy page where you can purchase the full course. I hope you enjoy this episode. So we're making great progress with our login view. So in this episode, let's go ahead and handle this email address and password input fields, starting with the fact that it says login right here. But if we reference back to our preview, there is no reference of that. Also, our label is e-mail, all in capitals, and right now we have email address. A little verbose, I feel like everybody knows that an email is an address, so no need to have that address. It will clean up your views just a little bit. So let's go back to PHP Storm, and let's start by removing that login. And here it is. It's a card header right now of login. We don't need that. As a matter of fact, all we really want to do is have this form. We no longer need to have any of the bootstrap classes. So why don't we actually grab this entire form, I'm going to cut it out, and then let's delete all of these divs here, and let's paste that form back in. So this form is now on its own without it being wrapped in all of those extra divs. Okay, so this won't change much here except the fact that we got rid of that login, and right away we see that this section right here is basically touching our credentials section. So let's add the same padding that we added underneath the logo. So back to PHP Storm. Again, you can add padding to the bottom of our H2, but I think it makes more sense to add the padding to the elements that is actually being affected. So let's add the same padding. We used padding top of eight above here, as you remember right here. So let's use the same padding for the actual form. That way we keep it consistent. Back to Chrome. There we go. We got a little bit more breathing room now. Now this email address, as I mentioned before, it is using a language file, but for us, we can get rid of that. And let's just hard code in email. Same thing for password. Down here, it's using a language file. Again, let's just use password instead. Okay, so this right here is a label, and then it's got form group row, which of course, another bootstrap class, we can get rid of that. We can get rid of all of these classes here because we no longer need them. We're no longer using bootstrap. So the label itself, it's going to be for email, which matches the ID and so far so good. Now for our preview, check this out, look at the color and of course it's uppercase. So let's take care of that now. So uppercase, it's actually a class which would turn this into uppercase and let's try text blue 500, a little bit darker than the other hue of blue that we used. And there we go, but it's still a little large. Let's make it a little smaller. Let's use text XS, so it's a little bit smaller, and let's bold the font. There we go. Okay, so that's looking much closer to our preview right here. But now we notice that this input actually wraps the actual label. And right now, if we take a look at our project, our label is outside of our input. So why don't we make this label be absolute so that it actually sits inside of our input tag. That's how we get this style of input right here. This entire lighter blue section that you see is the input itself. And then it's got, of course, the inner part, which is just a label. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. Now to do that, we need to make the entire section relative so that we can make the label absolute. Some basic CSS stuff. So the entire wrapper, let's make that relative. And then this label, we're gonna make this absolute. And let's check out what that does. So now we see that that's sitting inside our label. But of course, if we start to type in here, disaster. So we need to add sufficient padding inside our input so that we can actually bump that up just a little bit. So to do that, in our actual input, we can get rid of all of these classes here and let's add the same padding top of eight that we've been using as a base. And if we go back, now that's working correctly. But of course, this input, if we check out the preview, is supposed to be taking up the entire space that it has. So let's change the width of it. And to do that, all we need to do is just give it a width of full. Refresh, and sure enough, 
But again, we run into an issue where this has no padding around it whatsoever. And if we check out the preview, we have plenty of padding and we have rounded corners. So let's take care of those now by doing rounded. And let's add a padding all the way around of three. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that's starting to take shape, but now we've left our label without any padding. So our label will also need a padding. So let's go ahead and find our label here and then add a padding left of three. Refresh, okay, that's looking much better. But now this is basically bumped all the way to the top, so we're gonna have to move it down a little bit. So let's try also adding a padding top of two. And let's see, there we go. So this is looking great. It's actually looking a lot like the preview already, with the exception of, of course, the fact that it's white instead of this color. So let's change the background color of our input now. Back here in our input, let's go ahead and give it a background of blue 800. Let's try that one. Refresh, and there we go. So that's looking much, much closer to what it's supposed to be. Pretty cool, right? Now this, of course, has a placeholder of your at email.com. So let's add that now. We'll add a placeholder of your at email.com. And now we have that in there. It doesn't look exactly the same. So of course, with Tailwind, we can actually affect that as well. So let's try a text gray of 100. How about that? Let's add that to our input field, text gray 100. And let's see what that looks like. There we go. That should give us a nice muted color. And then when we type in, you can nicely see our form. But now the next thing you'll notice, of course, is our outline that's going all the way around. Now, of course, there's a lot of work that goes into applications that need to stay compliant with screen readers and stuff like that. And they do require this focus point because as we tap through this site, of course, we're going to want to give the user some sort of feedback that that element is selected. But this outline is kind of ugly. So let's go ahead and customize it. The first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and do an outline of none essentially removing it, but then we can use a focus. Let's change the background color instead. Let's lighten it up a little bit. Let's do blue 700. So our base background is 800. And then when we focus on it, of course, it's gonna turn into 700. Let's see what that looks like. So now it's focused, now it's not. So when we focus on it, it will give the user some feedback that it is selected, but of course is not the typical ugly outline that you would get out of the box. So that I think feels a little bit better for this design. So this is looking great. Give me a couple of minutes and I'm going to implement the exact same thing with our password field. I'll be right back. And we're back. So all I've done is simply just copy the classes that we had for the label and the classes that we had for the input. However, this of course is bumping into each other. So we are gonna have to add an extra class to the password field to give it a little bit of breathing room. Let's go ahead and shift the entire block down. Let's try a padding top of two to begin with. Let's see what that gives us. So that's a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. I think we've got a little bit more padding down here. So let's go to maybe three. See three, and there we go. So now we have our two fields and you can type into them, but they look much, much nicer. All right, how about this remember me section here? Let's check out the preview. It looks like it needs just a text of white. So let's handle that now, let's find it. And here's the label. We can get rid of all of these classes here and do text of white. See what that looks like? There we go, that's looking much better. But of course, we do need a little bit of breathing room the same way that we had here before. So let's go ahead and delete these classes here and do a padding top of two. Same exact padding. Okay, so that's looking much better. And then finally, we have this login and forgot your password. So we'll wrap it up for this lesson. And in the next lesson, let's handle the bottom section of our login view.